Uh, raise your hand and I'll, I'll call on folks. I see Michael Lodal. We'll start with him and we'll move up to Greg Seconds. Thank you, Clark. I, I'd like to ask about uh, eschatology. Uh, what are the options or living options today? Uh, well, for you, I suppose, but if you were to speak about openness theolo theologians regarding eschatology, um, put another way, how willing would one be to keep things open indefinitely? Uh, or, or perhaps everlastingly. Uh, I'm not quite sure where the landscape is on that one. Uh, what concerns me is, is that people seem to think Jesus at the end of history will be unlike Jesus is now, and they will all of a sudden become a very um, fearful and awful character. Um, I, I think, too, uh, in terms of uh, it looked like there aren't scriptural texts that speak about how delays are to be experienced. Like, like God is not slow concerning his promise, but, but long suffering toward us who, who believe, wanting more to come in, that lest any perish. So that's a, looks like he's waiting for that himself. Jesus said that he had it in his own power and the Father, but it seems also to be somewhat open in the Father's hands. And I think there's other texts like that. But, um, so I think, I guess Jürgen Wolf is, writes helpfully on this eschatological matter, as you know, in the context of that book of the um, of struggles, you know, the uh, conflict between tribes. And uh, he, I can't remember the specific quote. But. So I think we're waiting for the Lord's return. How that will happen is not known to us. I don't think it will violate what we know in God to be, so we can trust God for that. And we look for the Lamb who was slain to receive glory and honor, majesty, and power. Okay, great. Yeah, Clark, <clears throat> this may seem like a nitpicky point, but I think that actually quite a bit uh, rides on it. Um, you say that God uh, knows all that can be known, because um, our future free acts and even His future free acts. Uh, are actual, they're, they're not real. Yeah. So I'm wondering if the qualifier, all that can be known, adds to anything. Uh, it, it, why not just say God knows everything? And what's out there are possibilities. So God knows actualities is actualities, possibilities is possibilities. My concern is that when we say God knows all that can be known, yeah. uh, and there are a few well, people who, know, who should yeah. say that, because yeah. their view is actually that. But I think with your view, um, and for the majority of open theists, um, it, it's, um, to say God knows all that can be known postulates something out there that can't be known, no, no, which raises all sorts of questions about omniscience. So it's a mistake, and thanks for correcting me, correcting me a number of times on that one. <laughs> <laughs>
poetic depth of scripture, but I wonder how you deal with the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Well, I think God always had it in mind to be gracious towards sinners, and that this. So um, this is an example of that. Um, I love the uh, the language, like you say. The uh, sir, I think he's saying when you read. John is saying when you read this, and where you see lion, read lamb. <laughs> <laughs> So this 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 end this Jesus will bring us about by his great love and um, I, I hope I think God will do this without being coercive even though people deserve it but it's on his way so I, I think the Jesus centrality of my Jesus and my theology forces me to watch for a non-violent end compatible with our Lord's commandments. Alan. Oh, thank you. No, I'd just like to follow up on what Karen said because I, I, I think it's interesting because it, 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 what you, one of the things I like about what you said, Clark, was that um, in, in making the world in the beginning, God makes a world which um, has uh, possibilities and freedom in it that, such that they are, um, <laughs> I'm going to say this again, can't be known. <laughs> Uh, in other words, com 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 compared to other logically possible worlds, where everything is predetermined, right? Uh, the, in, in this kind of a world, uh, the, 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 where there's freedom and complexity and openness in the physical and the, the moral realm. Yeah, well, then it's open to you then to say, okay, that, that's thinking about omniscience. But then, in, the, in, the, in thinking about God's love and God's relationship to few free creatures that in the beginning God foresaw the, the consequences of the sin and rebellion and was already willing yeah. to lay down God's life to struggle and yeah, God's working on it. So that the intention to give up God's own life was in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Even before the world was, was brought into being, given birth. Um, I think it's open to you and I wonder if it would be agree with that, or do you think that's going too far, or to the way I find it? I think it really helps, because it's grounded in the most ancient, God's desire is always to do this. And I remember reading H. Wheeler Robinson on Jeremiah, and he said something like that the cross was planted in God's heart before it was history. Yeah, that's a good quote. That's what I mean. Yeah, I love what you said, thank you, that's a beautiful thing. I have a question that weighs heavily on me and a number of Christian evangelical philosophers that I've talked to about open theism. That open theism is a break with, as Tom Flint said twice, is a break with the vast majority of church history. Most Christian scholars have it from yeah. the buying four dollars. So wouldn't it be better um, to embrace mystery on this, to affirm foreknowledge and, and, and remain coherent? history, for human freedom, uh, and say we don't know how to put the two together. Uh, we wouldn't, at least theologically, it wouldn't be any worse off than science, where we have conflicts between chaos and quantum mechanics and quantum mechanics and general relativity. So I, I just I wanted to hear about, you know, kind of a response to Tom's appeal to the church history. Mm -hmm. Is that how problematic is that? worries me that uh, it's so recent, and there are not a lot of examples of it, though there's some. Even though it's obvious that this is a problem, so why wasn't it picked up on it? That's a little disturbing. But on the other hand, um, I mean, theology is an ongoing practice of, of seeking understanding. And why would we say when something fresh comes along, oh, it's new? Sorry, can't that? I mean, it's, usually we say if something comes along as new, it's kind of happy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> 